Hello, my audience of fellow sociology students. Today, we will be talking about social institutions and social structure. I am your host, Lexton Bunting, and I'm glad to be here. So uh, let's get started. To begin this presentation, we are first going to want to define the concept of social class within sociology and how this concept can be applied to the United States. To explain, social class is actually a social structure in which an individual is grouped based on income and educational level. Uh, for more clarity, the citizens of the United States are usually broken into three major classes, upper class, middle class, and lower class. And in terms of separation, an individual is labeled middle class if they are within one standard deviation of the median income. Social class is important to understand at the beginning of this presentation because our social class determines our daily thoughts, feelings, and attitudes. For social stratification, to fully dive into the next three slides about American social stratification of social institutions, I wanted to preface by defining what stratification is to create a uniform foundation for these next three slides. To explain, stratification is the sociological concept of defining a social hierarchy by the use of certain wealth, occupation, educational level, race, and gender classifications. So reflecting on the last slide we just covered, the American social class system is a perfect example of a social institution that is socially stratified by these classifications. Perfect. So the education system within America can be broken down into two major distinctions or classifications. Firstly, the funding discrepancy of, or sorry, between public and private schools that show a classification of educational well-being and wealth where families who can't afford private schools are actually better set up for higher educational opportunities. This cr then creates another classification of wealth through who can attend a four-year university rather than a community college or an apprenticeship. The American educational system is also still suffering from the regulations of redlining, which is which was a racial practice that separates communities by race, which therefore creates racial disparities within the public education system. In terms of social stratification uh, for the military system within America, it's especially objective within its hierarchy of leadership, which is based on ranking. So the higher ranking can provide individuals with more authority and leadership positions, but also provide them better pay, better benefits, and their for better living conditions. Now, another important note is the socioeconomic background of the individuals who enlist in the United States Air Force and Navy, which mostly stems from the middle class due to the military's need for new educated personnel due to technological advances. For American social stratification of social institutions for religion and medicine, focusing on religion, the social classifications of race and gender are the two most defining. So many denominations across the Protestant religion are defined by pseudo-racial lines, with examples such as Hispanic Protestants, Black Protestants, and White Protestant groups. Many religions also assign gender roles and specifications for each gender, for example, Catholics and Eastern Orthodox traditionalists do not allow women for leadership or pastoral positions, but actually view women as the only group to partake in a miracle, which is to create life. In terms of medicine, the social institution of medicine within America also has defining classifications such as economic, racial, and gender discrepancies. For example, individuals in a higher socioeconomic class have higher or sorry, have better health care access than a person of a lower social class. It is also seen that racial minorities are also less insured to provide health care access and therefore are more expensive uh, due to the lack of insurance. Moving on uh, regarding American politics, there are two main areas of focus I wanted to uh, focus on. Firstly, the individuals who become politicians 
are usually in an upper level social class with a higher level of education of law or politics. It has also seen that men are overrepresented within the political spheres of American politics, but this social stratification of gender is slowly changing due to more women becoming major key speakers within political parties. Secondly, is the focus of politics to create social activism and movements to change social classifications and legal regulations. Politics serve as a social institution that can change the very fabric of classes represented. One major example of this would be the civil rights movement of the 1960s and 70s, and this, uh, the deregulation of Jim Crow laws, which allowed for racial integration into other social institutions, such as the American educational system. Social institutions create the foundation of macro sociology and are very important instruments in maintaining social order, compliance, and competition among groups and organizations. The three main social institutions focused on the slide on this slide would be education, religion, and politics. Firstly, education is significant due to its use as a social mobility tool for individuals of lower socioeconomic classes. Education also serves as an early tool to teach young children social norms, gestures, and language deemed necessary for social cooperation. The social institution of religion creates a moral framework in which many individuals and in other social institutions uh, within society adapt and consider when making decisions. One can observe this religious moral influence by how an individual votes on a certain uh, social issue or how a political level or on a political level by what phrase is written on our American currency. Politics is also a very significant social institution to consider due to its power and authority for social movements in creating social change. Many times, social institutions have a inherent social injustices within their system. This could include gender inequality, de facto racism, or socioeconomic barrier that creates inequality. Politics is a very powerful tool for improving social institutions. Now, going into the sociological views of education, both from a functionalist perspective and a conflict perspective, uh, a sociologist from a functionalist perspective would view the social institution of education as one of the first organizations of socialization. Educational environments serve as a learning ground for students to adapt to social norms, values, gestures, and traditions. Education also serves as a system for social placement within society through grades, test scores, and extracurricular activities to promote social cohesion and job replacement. Moving on, so a sociologist from the conflict theory perspective would view education as a social institution that reinforces socioeconomic inequality due to a lack of equality and resources among public and private schools. This per, uh, perspective could also raise the case that the educational system is the first governmentally regulated social institution a member of society joins and therefore is the foundation of inequality and injustice among socioeconomic classes. Concerning religion, a functionalist perspective would state that religion is used as a system to promote social cohesion through social adaptation of norms, traditions, and values among a congregation. This adaptation of morals also serves as a structure of social control, which promotes the notion of love and cohesion within society. Religion can also be used as an environment in which individuals can actually skip socioeconomic boundaries due to the equalizing nature of churches, synagogues, and mosques. Regarding the conflict theory perspective, the social institution of religion can be seen as a way for dominant social groups or organizations to control and regulate the attitudes of other submissive social groups for power dominance and authority. Religion can also be seen as a way to make the so or the lower socio sorry the lower socioeconomic class docile and non-threatening as there is now a divine justification for their hardships.
Perfect. Lastly, we will focus on the social institution of politics. From a function functionalist point of view, politics can be seen as an instrument of social change that regulates and promotes social cohesion on a macro-sociological level. Politics also serves as the framework for social order and stability through the regulation, creation, and abolishment of laws. From a conflict theorist point uh, viewpoint, the social institution of politics serves as the primary system of systemic injustice and equality worldwide, such as racial redlining in neighborhoods, Jim Crow era laws, or even gender rules promoted by the historical lack of representation of women within politics. A conflict theorist will also state that social change will only come through or come about through conflict and therefore should be the goal of anyone attempting to revolutionize the political system. I just want to thank you so much for your time today. Please reach out to me if you do have any questions on the topic cover on the topics covered in today's PowerPoint, and I will see you all next time. God bless. And here are the resources I used within the PowerPoint. Thank you so much.